Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here. Welcome back to Tesla Daily. Hope everybody had a great weekend. We are now back to the normal format and today we're going to be discussing some news on Tesla out of China. We've also got an update on Model Y, both pricing and demand. News on Bitcoin from Elon Musk, a couple updates on the Plaid Model S, a price target lowering from Canaccord Genuity, and a couple other pieces of news as well. Decent start to the week for Tesla stock, finishing up 1.3% today to $617.69. That compared to the Nasdaq up three quarters of a percent, so Pretty good macro tailwind today for stocks like Tesla. All right, we'll start off in China today. We've got a few pieces of news, some rumors, some clarifications to make. First is an update from a Chinese Tesla supplier named Tuopo. They supply, in addition to Tesla, major automakers like Volkswagen, GM, Fiat Chrysler, BMW, etc. And I believe this update that I first saw shared out on Twitter by Ray for Tesla was an update from an investor call. And it looks to me like in a question and answer portion of the call, Tesla was brought up. Or at least I think that is the inference from context clues, and unfortunately because this is translated, I don't have a really good insight into the context provided, but they are referred to here as Company A. Anyway, the translated question reads, quote, There are many negative news about Company A in the market recently. How about the company's order situation? End quote. With the translated answer, reading, quote, The company strictly abides by the customer's confidentiality requirements. It is inconvenient to disclose. Please understand. What I want to say is, in the process of cooperating with customers, we deeply realized that all things done by company A are correct, including product positioning, R&D, manufacturing, supplier management, quality, marketing, etc., are all very correct. Other cars, there's a gap of at least five years between companies. At noon, we saw a 240% increase in sales of company A in Europe in May. Rapid growth. The emergence and growth of the new species will have problems of this kind, which are also short-lived. We can't just look at the appearance, we are very optimistic, and the current orders are normal. End quote. So obviously a little bit of confusion there in the translation, but there's a gap of at least five years between companies. That seems pretty clear. And they're saying current orders are normal. Remember, this doesn't mean orders to Tesla. This just means orders to the supplier from Tesla. So a five-year lead from Tesla, no orders being canceled or anything like that, which is not surprising. And then they also go to bat for Tesla saying that throughout the entire process, Tesla has done things correctly, which I think is a show of support in favor of Tesla amidst all of the, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt being spread around brake failures and quality issues or whatever else, particularly what we've seen over the last couple of months in China. There might also be some other interesting details from the supplier. Tesla Motors Club forum member PrintF42 was able to find some notes that seemed to be about whatever investor call this was. And because they're notes, and then furthermore, because they're translated notes, it is a little bit difficult to understand again contextually. But it does look like there are some interesting references in here, one to the Cybertruck, another to potentially a second factory, and then a third to a 500,000 part order, presumably the Octovalve, for 2021. So again, I'm not reading too much into these, mostly I just wanted to point it out, and I'll link to the notes in the description today, in case anybody is able to dig up a little bit more context on that. Next on China, a couple of updates from Friday's episode. So remember we talked about how Tesla was offering a 7,000 RMB or about 1,000 US dollar discount for orders delivered and insured by the end of the month or discounted financing rates for three or five year loans. So for that piece of it, I was a little bit confused on the interest rates because they were really high. Turns out that's the total interest rate over the life of the loan, not the annual percentage rate. So Tesla basically offering here to take one to 2% off the APR. So just wanted to correct on that. And then while we're on the topic, might as well take a look at delivery estimates. They are still one of three weeks for both the Model 3 and the Model Y in China. The other follow-up is to this tweet that said that Tesla's Shanghai plant is going to have a five-day holiday. So I didn't realize this. I said we should keep an eye on Wu Wa's videos. He does the Shanghai flyovers. This was actually Wu Wa's Twitter account. Anyway, in his video on Friday, so same source here, he says that the employees did enjoy a five-day holiday, but quote, although the holiday began on the 10th, the Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory 3 was on vacation in batches, so the factory did not stop work. Yesterday, June 11th, I went to Lingang to shoot and saw that the factory was still busy and green." End quote. So as we're thinking about the Q2 numbers, that does still leave us with a little bit of uncertainty around that five-day period of time. Even though production was still running, presumably there would be some impact from not having people there, whether it's staggered or not. Otherwise, really, there wouldn't be a need for those people in the first place. So probably some impact that we'll have to keep in mind for the Q2 numbers, but hopefully not as dramatic of an impact as a full five-day continuous shutdown. So that is kind of the latest on China. Moving back over to the United States, we've got a couple of updates here. First off, Tesla has actually increased the price of the Model Y again in the United States. This did actually happen last Wednesday. I mentioned it in an article I wrote, but because of the Plaid event, forgot to mention it on the podcast. But if we look at our handy-dandy price tracking table, we can see that the long-range Model Y has again been increased by $500, now starting at $52,490. 
and that was the fifth price increase on the Model Y in Q2 alone, so the base price is now $2,500 more than it was to start the quarter. No change this time around to the Model 3 or to the Model Y performance, but of course we saw the Plaid Model S price increase $10,000, we talked about that. And another item that I mentioned in that article, which I don't think we talked about here, was the fact that the Plaid Model X is actually now cheaper than the Plaid Model S by $10,000. That is very unusual. The Model X generally costs more. It's a bigger vehicle. It is a little bit more complicated to build as well. And for example, the long range version of the Model X costs $10,000 more than the long range Model S. So kind of unusual. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see an increase on the Plaid Model X, though I'm not sure why we wouldn't have seen one already. But if you have been on the fence about ordering a Plaid Model X, might be a good time to do that to lock in that price just in case. Anyway, back to the Model Y, there was an article today published by Tesla Rati that seemed to get syndicated a few other places, and I saw some people attribute to a spike that we saw in the midday trading today in Tesla stock. The headline here by Tesla Rati is, quote, Tesla Model Y demand skyrockets long-range variant nearly sold out for Q3, end quote. The article points out that the estimated delivery time for the long-range Model Y in the United States is currently listed in the design studio as September. So I've got a couple thoughts on this. First, we did see that timeline actually shift a while back. I think it was last week when that was updated to September. And second, I wouldn't really agree with the characterization that that implies a nearly sold out Q3 for the Model Y. Normally, when we are towards the end of the quarter and we see those delivery estimates move out by, you know, more than a month or so, generally the explanation comes back to that quarterly batching process where Tesla builds for international markets early in the quarter so that they can produce, ship, and deliver those vehicles all within the same quarter. That process then obviously pushes domestic deliveries out until Tesla focuses on domestic orders later in the quarter. Now, the reason I say that's generally the case is because that shouldn't apply quite as much to the Model Y because the Model Y is not shipping over to Europe yet. However, it is shipping to Canada, and we don't know Tesla's full plans for Q3 yet. For example, in Q2, surprisingly, Tesla shipped over some Model Ys to South Korea, and it does look like those went from Fremont rather than from Shanghai. We didn't really know about that until it happened, possible Tesla could do something like that again to South Korea or a different country in Q3. That distinction is important because it affects the inference that you can take from this estimated wait time shift. That part being said, the obvious other factor here is that September is still in Q3, so yes it is the last month in Q3, but I wouldn't be surprised if this September date stays for a while, and I think before they had shifted it to September the estimated wait time had been 9 to 13 weeks, so a timeline of September is actually pretty similar to what it was. The final point here is that Tesla could be using this as a tactic to shift people into the performance Model Y, so the performance Model Y wait time is only 1 to 10 weeks, so a wide span there, but I'm sure Tesla's orders are strong enough that they have no doubt that they're going to be able to easily sell out Model Y production for Q3. So hey, if they can offer an earlier delivery for the performance, maybe that would encourage some people to trade up. So obviously it's an indicator that Tesla's got strong demand, I'm not arguing with the general point there. This is a little bit more semantical and it is important to recognize that strong demand, but I guess I just am a little bit leery of that sold out language, especially given that report that we had from Electrek in early May saying Q2 was sold out, which in hindsight does not seem to have been the case. A few more notes here on the Model Y, I would file these under the rumor category. This is coming from Troy Teslike, he said these were okay to share. Just a few things that he has heard from a source. So first one here, quote, Tesla will start exporting Model Y from China to Europe in early Q3 2021. The reason that was mentioned was that there is a big Model Y order backlog in Europe and there are some delays with Giga Berlin, so Tesla wants to start deliveries with exports. Also Model Y production in Shanghai will ramp up in Q3, and production targets are very high for Q3 and Q4, but no specific number was mentioned." End quote. So we'll just have to wait and see on that, but as I mentioned, the wait time for the Model Y in China right now is estimated to be 1-3 to three weeks. So it's not looking like there's a huge order backlog in China right now. That could be a factor in Tesla making a decision to decide to export the Model Y. Of course, they're already doing that from Shanghai with the Model 3. So that should be all set to go logistically. And of course, there's a significant order backlog in Europe. But I do think it becomes a little bit tricky to manage because certainly some of those customers would be expecting a Model Y from Giga Berlin, which Elon Musk has referred to openly as literally next generation. So obviously Tesla can figure out how to navigate through that if they want to. But I would think if they had enough demand in China to absorb all of the production, or if Giga Berlin were not significantly behind, that it probably wouldn't make sense to deal with some of that confusion that that might cause. Bulls might argue that, oh, Tesla's just doing that to maintain some level of market share so people don't go to another electric vehicle in the meantime. I get the point, but if Berlin really is starting production in Q4 or Q1, you know, you're really only saving three to six months of time. I'm really not sure that's all that material. If Tesla really cared about that, well, they could have been exporting Model Ys from Fremont over to Europe for a long time now, and they haven't. 
Now you might argue back with, well, North American demand has been so strong, why would they ship them to Europe? But that's kind of my point here. If Shanghai or China demand were so strong, again, why would they ship them over to Europe? It's kind of the same argument. I did also see a report this weekend that Tesla may launch a lithium iron phosphate battery, Model Y from Shanghai in July, which I would definitely put into that rumor mill category, but I think fits in the context of this whole conversation. So I know my comments here haven't been the most optimistic, but try to isolate that from my view of Tesla in general. I'm still very optimistic. This doesn't change anything for me. I'm just trying to monitor the situation closely. I'm not really seeing much of a reason to have any long-term concerns. I think if there has been an impact here, it's short-term in nature, and I think sentiment is shifting. I expect things will quickly recover if there has been. And as we've discussed, Tesla's got plenty of options to work through it, again, if there even are any issues in China. Anyway, back to Troy's source, he also says that Tesla is planning to shut down Model Y production at Fremont when Giga Texas starts making the Model Y 2.0, but they're considering whether the shutdown will be temporary or permanent. Originally, they planned to build a new general assembly line at Fremont for the Model Y, allowing them to remove those two sprung structures or tents. So it sounds like they're now considering when Giga Texas is ramped up, shutting that down and using that space for potentially a different product, which obviously I would defer to Tesla on that, but from where I'm sitting, doesn't seem to make a ton of sense. So I'm not putting much stock in that, more so just bringing it up to put it on the radar or on the vision system, I guess, nowadays, in case we hear more about it in the future. Next note from the source here, Texas Model Y will be slightly different than the Berlin version, which I don't find too surprising depending what those differences are, so not much to say on that one. And then Model Y production in Shanghai has a build failure rate of less than 3%, which is exceptionally low in the industry. The target for Model Y 2.0 in Berlin is less than 2%. So I don't know too much about that, but a really good failure rate would be a good thing for margins. So that was it for the Model Y, and then the last thing here was for the Model S, saying the Model S Plaid will be exported to Europe in October. So put all of those things in the rumor mill, but I wanted to at least pass those along. Speaking of the Plaid, we've got a couple updates on that. So people have continued to try to figure out which batteries the Plaid has. As I've said, I'm pretty confident it's not the 4680s. There have been some rumors from the event that a Tesla employee said 2170s. Warren Redlick was at the event, he says that he was told 18650s, and again, Bill Wright on Twitter, who was believed to work at Kick Nevada, is also saying 18650s, so that continues to be my belief, but wanted to share those comments from Warren and Bill Wright. As for the new motors in the Plaid, Elon did share a few more details on that on Twitter over the weekend, a couple of tweets talking about the carbon fiber sleeves that Elon mentioned at the delivery event, then saying, quote, The Plaid carbon-wrapped motor is arguably the most advanced motor on Earth, outside of maybe a lab somewhere. We have to keep some secrets. We have a few ideas for increasing torque and max RPM even further for new Roadster. Definitely fun and exciting engineering ahead, end quote. So as I noted during the delivery event, stuff like this is generally going to go unnoticed or underappreciated, but those are the kind of things that often make the difference in the long run. And then Elon also mentioning the Roadster here, sounds like these are unsurprisingly the motors that the Roadster is going to use, but it sounds like Tesla is still working on them. So just keep that in mind when setting expectations for the timeline for the Roadster, especially given the delays we've already seen on the Plaid Model S. Tesla here clearly still working on some development for the Roadster, despite a lot of people's expectations that Tesla was just going to go ahead and roll the Roadster out at the Plaid delivery event. One thing that did roll out, at least shortly after the Plaid delivery event, was a Plaid Model S from Unplugged Performance. They have customized this, getting it ready to race for the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, which looks like it's a couple weeks away on June 27th. So the Unplugged Performance team has already been out testing this at Laguna Seca, and they've had some good things to say so far. Notably to me was a comment that Randy Popes, the driver, made, saying that he came back with about 34% charge from one lap and announced that the car feels as quick as it did with a full charge, adding that, quote, that's a big difference, end quote, presumably from previous Teslas that they have raced. So that's been a common criticism of Tesla and electric vehicles in general, especially in the racing community, that power drop off at lower states of charge. So good to see some positive early comments in that regard. Next here, just a quick update on Tesla's Bitcoin situation. Yesterday, Elon on Twitter replied to an article accusing him of pumping and dumping Bitcoin, saying that it wasn't accurate. Tesla only sold 10% of their Bitcoins to confirm liquidity. And quote, when there's confirmation of reasonable, about 50% clean energy usage by miners with positive future trend, Tesla will resume allowing Bitcoin transactions. End quote. So it looks like the breakup meme that Elon had tweeted about a week and a half ago with Bitcoin and a broken heart emoji was more about the Bitcoin community. And I guess Elon's previous tweet with the diamond hands emojis is the one that applies to Tesla's actual Bitcoin position. Assuming Tesla doesn't sell any then, the rest of Q2, there would be no gain recognized for them in the Q2 financials, and they're likely to have some impairment recognized, which we walked through previously. I think my forecast was somewhere around 60 or 70 million from that. 
Remember, that's just an accounting technicality. It has no bearing on Tesla's position or their business in general. Analysts will definitely back that out, but it is just important to remember heading into earnings. The next story here is an updated price target from Canaccord Genuity analyst Jed Dorsheimer, pretty well-respected analyst. He has lowered his price target on Tesla from $974 previously to $812 per share now, writing, quote, Leading up to the delayed launch, Tesla canceled the top trim Model S Plaid Plus, which was reportedly the first to feature the new 4680 cell design. This signals to us the new cell format isn't ready for production just yet, and cell production capacity constraints for energy storage, products like Powerwall remain. Coupling this with macro near-term uncertainty surrounding inflation and Fed policy causing a sector rotation out of growth and into value names leads us to our price target reduction. Our price target of $812 is based on applying 50 times our 2024 enterprise value slash EBITDA estimate of $18 billion, previously $974 based on 60x, end quote. So lowering their multiple there, similar to what we had seen another analyst do, I can't remember exactly which one, maybe a week or two ago, and then expecting 4680 delays because of the Plaid Plus cancellation. On that part of it, I was actually having this conversation with a friend this weekend. I don't view the Plaid Plus cancellation as any signal one way or the other on 4680s. Remember, the most recent date for the Plaid Plus was mid-2022, and certainly we're expecting Model Ys from Berlin or Texas or both before that, and Tesla has consistently said that those are going to be the 4680s, so unless you think that those are both delayed until mid-2022, I don't see how you could connect that with delaying either the 4680 launch or volume production, as the Plaid Plus would obviously be small volume and super high margin, so it would be a great use of the first cells. As I said before, I think it's just that Tesla went through this process of just doing the Plaid now, and we've seen six-month delays on that already. That's already eaten into the return that Tesla's going to get on the program overall. After having been through that, are they really going to sit there and say, hey, we want to do this again in a year for the Plaid Plus? Then you've got that vehicle sitting out there that you can't deliver, taking away demand from a vehicle that you actually could deliver today. Just doesn't make a lot of sense. Plus, Lucid seems to be having some issues, so there's maybe a little bit less pressure on Tesla to deliver a vehicle with those specs. I think the combination of all of those things is much more a factor in the Plaid Plus cancellation than anything 4680 related. All right, last couple of stories here. First, some big news out of New Zealand. They have instituted a new electric vehicle incentive, offering a rebate up to 8,625 New Zealand dollars, which is about 6,200 US dollars, on the purchase of new electric vehicles starting July 1st. They then are actually funding this through adding a tax on internal combustion engine vehicles. Depending on the level of emissions, that can go up to 5,175 New Zealand dollars, or about $3,700 USD. So Tesla's would be eligible for the top credit there, but there is a cap at 80,000 New Zealand dollars. So it looks like right now only the standard range Model 3 would fall under that cap. The long range Model 3 in New Zealand starts at about 88,000 New Zealand dollars. Nevertheless, should be good for electric vehicle adoption in New Zealand. And then lastly today, we've got an update from Redwood Materials. So you may remember this is the startup that JB Straubel left Tesla to go work on for battery recycling. Earlier today, they tweeted, quote, We have big plans in Nevada. We're expanding our Carson City footprint to 550,000 plus square feet and broke ground on another 100 acres in TRI. We'll create more than 500 additional jobs and spend hundreds of millions in the region in the next couple of years plus. Join us, end quote. TRI there being the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center in Nevada. So always nice to hear an update from Redwood Materials and interesting to see the investment they plan to make there in the scale of hundreds of millions of dollars. It's pretty sizable for a relatively young company. So that is where we'll leave it for today. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, June 15th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.